Uh, like them all, we'll just wait about 15, 20 seconds for everyone to log in and grab a seat. Hope everyone is doing well today. Hi, Marie, how are you? Hi, I am good, thanks, Rob. Perfect, nice. Kia ora and welcome to another Future Skills Academy webinar. My name is Rob McClay and I'll be your host today. This webinar is an opportunity to learn all about the symptoms of anxiety and how to manage them from our Head of Department for Healthcare, Marie Laycock. Today we're going to be covering the four aspects of anxiety, common anxiety symptoms and five ways to well-being. Marie is Head of Department for Health at Future Skills Academy and she holds a postgraduate diploma in Health Sciences and also holds qualifications in adult teaching. She has also worked as a healthcare lecturer, an academic manager, and a quality leader. She's also trained as a registered nurse at Auckland Hospital. Um, <clears throat> a little bit about future skills. Uh, we're an opera, uh, we're, we have been operating since 2001. We're a leading category one training provider with campuses in Monaco and Royal Oak and also North Shore. We also have an international campus in partnership with Otago Polytechnic and Auckland CBD with a range of programs from diplomas to masters. Welcome, Marie. Uh, thanks for joining myself and viewers today. I've got a pretty good turnout. Uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing all about this topic. And um, I'm guessing most people today here have either experienced anxiety or know someone who, who has. So uh, I believe you've got a really great presentation. Over to you. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Rob. Um, kia ora koto, everyone. Um, yes, so anxiety. Uh, we have all experienced anxiety in different degrees, and this is just a few tips and pointers from our mental health and addictions program about what, what anxiety is and some ways that you might be able to, uh, uh, to manage it yourself. So there are many types of different anxieties. Um, there's a generalized anxiety disorder uh, where you're just sort of feeling that on a number of days, maybe for quite a long time, that uh, you're anxious about things. Then there are phobias, which are not like, um, not like when you just sort of are scared of something, but when you are absolutely terrified of something and it, and it paralyzes you. Um, there's obsessive compulsive disorder, and this might be uh, where you've got persistent or repetitive thoughts about um, having to keep things clean or um, constantly up, upgrade things um, or avoid touching things. Um, then there's post-traumatic stress disorder. So this is a reaction to a highly stressful event and you often can get flashbacks um, and you can also be quite anxious and have repeated nightmares from them. Uh, and the panic disorder is just when you're having panic attacks. So these might be intense feelings of anxiety. It could also uh, cause physical symptoms such as a racing heart, um, feeling faint, shaking, nausea, all these sorts of things. And you might wonder if you're something terribly wrong with you and you're having a heart attack. Um, but it is it is a, a panic disorder. So it's still, it's not something you can shake off, but um, it, it does happen. So there are four aspects to anxiety. There's the physical tension, uh, which so that affects your body and how you react to stress. There's the mental apprehension where you're just uh, got things going around in your head, constantly worrying about them, can't stop thinking about things. Um, the physical symptoms, which will be like your um, the way your bo your body reacts to stress, and everybody's a little bit different as to what those physical symptoms may manifest as. Is. And then there's just and then there's dissociative anxiety. So common symptoms might be fear of losing control, uh, struggling to breathe. Um, all of these things, muscle the, often the physical ones are the muscle tension, headaches, migraines, pain in your abdomen or cramps, maybe uh, nausea and vomiting. You might feel also depression or tearful along with anxiety. Um, snowballing worries that get bigger, you're avoiding situations or you're just constantly worrying about things. And you might recognize some of these things anyway in your life, that in your past that uh, may not have actually gone into an anxiety disorder, but they are symptoms of your being anxious. 
So in order to manage our feelings of anxiety, we are trying to uh, improve our mental and physical well-being and resilience. And there are five things that we can do to improve this. One is to build meaningful relationships. Now, this has been known to uh, also help people age better. If you have very good social relationships that are meaningful to you, um, being active physically also increases our uh, wellness and decreases stress, helps with your endorphins. Um, keep learning, remaining curious and having goals and wanting to learn new things and being able to connect with others. That's very important as well. Um, you've probably heard being mindful. That's from, you know, of, often with uh, uh, yoga or other self-meditation uh, things, you might be told to be mindful, be grateful, be in the present. And that also does uh, also help with feelings of anxiety because it grounds you in what you're doing now rather than the potential futures that may happen. And helping people out, volunteering, being involved in your community also gives you a great sense of achievement and well-being. Um, and in our program with our mental health and addictions, this is one of the main areas that people really, uh, really enjoy is the being able to give back to people, to be able to work with people, see the improvement, help them on their journeys. So that's one of our main objectives for our mental health program. Thanks, Mary. Um, can I just uh, go back to the previous slide? Uh, I just wanted to sort of add, add, ask a couple of questions around that. Um, so um, with the exercise, um, you know, I find that um, going to the gym uh, at the end of every day after a stressful day um, helps me a lot. It helps me to reset. What are your thoughts about that? Yes, I mean, it has been proven, there have been studies um, that, physical activity does help you to reset. Um, but it, also physical activity does give you an endorphin. Um, you know, if you get it, particularly um, cardio activities, you you get quite strong endorphins, which give you a feeling of wellness. Um, and those those are very important. Um, with yeah. the, yeah, so with the gym, you can use gym. A lot of people cycle um, because you can also then, or running because you're, by yourself and you just concentrate on you know what you're doing your surroundings how your body's managing what your body's coping with so you can sort of forget about all of the worries while you're concentrating on your fitness yeah i find uh taking the doggos out for a walk uh, every morning uh helps me to uh, reset get a bit of vitamin d what are your what are your thoughts around sort of you know getting enough sunlight uh, does that help Oh, absolutely. Yes. Um, vitamin D is a really big thing. In New Zealand, it's not um, quite so difficult because, as you say, we are outside often walking the dog, just moving from um, work to home, etc. Um, in some other countries, that can be a problem. And also for people who are in care, that's a problem because they're often not outside. So vitamin D, uh, you know, they may be not getting as much vitamin D. Uh, may need supplements as well. Um, other things that you can also take to help your mental health are, think, are zinc. Zinc is very good uh, also to if you wanted to supplement to help your mental health. Interesting. And um, around the volunteering, so um, do, part of the course the program that you run, there's any sort of elements there that the students do around volunteering or is it that do they go anywhere to... Do anything like that? Absolutely. So as part of the course, we've got 200 hours of volunteer placement. Uh, so what we do is we have a, um, a system here and a lecturer who is involved with sorting those placements out and making sure that the, the placement, where they're going for that volunteer placement and uh, where the student lives is all matching up together. So we basically uh, individualize the placement for the student and the play and the provider to make sure it's a good fit and that people can get there and that they'll enjoy it. Um, and that's often, you know, when the students are volunteering, um, we find that they really enjoy that. And they then often will also find that they'll be offered a job within that 
environment. Um, it's kind of like a trial, I suppose, for employment, but we do have a large number of students who do get employment into that area where they've volunteered. Yeah, and I'm, I'm guessing that at the top there you've got the, the word connect, uh, the, the building relationships. So you're sort of killing two birds of one stone there. You're, you're doing a bit of volunteering, you're also connecting, making new relationships and just creating opportunities for yourself. And I think that there would be a huge sort of uh, brain booster to, to get those endorphins going. You know, you're moving forward. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, definitely. And I mean, it starts before the placement, actually, because when this, you, you come into a class as a student, um, you, you're, full of, you're in a class of people, like-minded people who are looking at the same goals. And we find that a lot of friendships and relationship, not, not for necessarily relationships as a relationship, but as a platonic relationship, mm-hmm. um, you know, develop. And our students actually like to catch up with each other. They form little groups, study groups, etc., to support each other. And so it becomes almost like a family feeling. I mean, our, our classes are not that big. We don't have hundreds of students in them. So there is that opportunity to build that meaning relationship, uh, meaningful relationship with your classmates as well. Right. You want to talk to us a little bit about uh, where to to apply um, around the programs and what to expect? Yes. So uh, I'll just bring this up onto the thing. So this is our Future Skills um, web page. Can you uh, assume yep, you can yep. Good, wonderful. So the um, this is our mental health and addiction um, program, and it's 120 credits. So the indicative fees are 6,620, but we do offer scholarships at the moment uh, for this year. It's... Um, 32 weeks full-time and 48 weeks part-time. So how would you go about uh, applying for a scholarship? So I would think that many people would be interested in, in, in applying for that. Do you need to submit anything or, or, or do anything to get that scholarship? We're, we're offering scholarships to all our level three and four students. Okay. Um, you don't have to accept it. There are other alternatives for your funding as well. You can sometimes get like uh, funding from... Um, community groups or um, different cultural groups um, often provide quite a lot of free funding as well for your education. Um, so for this one, we're paying your fees. There is, you do need to make sure that you complete the program uh, because if you withdraw, there's an admin fee that you would be charged. So, but we do, um, we do pay for your fees. And um, yeah, we've got a, a we've got a, a intake next coming up on the 25th of September that's uh, um, three weeks time <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> exactly yes uh, is that the last one for the year or, or is, is that the the only one left um yeah I think it is the last one for the year okay. yes so if you're keen to um kick off your studies uh, now's the time because otherwise you will have to wait till uh probably February I would think correct yes correct yes ah, that's nice. <clears throat> Yes, yeah, so the advantages that we have is a small class size. So we have less than 30 in a class. Um, mm. Generally, it ranges from 24 to 30. Um, we're aligned with industry and we've got a lot of people, a lot of industry that we uh, connect with that um, you can be placed into. Um, we have what's great the What sort of businesses do you connect with? Um, and so with you? Salvation Army, uh, yeah. Emerge, um, Ember, Pathways, um, Kahui, Kaha, Toyora are just some of the ones that we've been connecting with quite closely recently. Uh, but the, we have got um, probably about 20 or 30 different organisations uh, across Auckland that we can um, put students into and we've got a relationship manager um, who's also extending who we are de- who we're managing you know who we can put people into for volunteer placements as well so it's an ever-growing circle of organizations and there's something for everybody so I've got another question around student support what uh, what do you offer around student support services so uh, is there any help there Oh, yes, definitely. We've got um, 
uh, we've got four people on our student support at the moment. So one of them is for academic support, which who um, Lynette helps with um, admission uh, assessments. So if you're having trouble submitting your assessment or actually writing your assessment and you just need some guidance and some one-to-one -one help, she can help you with that. And we've got pastoral care help. So if things start to get a bit difficult for you, uh, either at home or financially, or maybe you've got a, a, a mental health uh, condition that's sort of starting to come back and you need some support, we can help you point you in the right direction for that. Uh, we also offer IT support, so we can assist you with, you know, if you're struggling with using our, um, our Moodle platform for our courses, then we've got lots of support that we can provide you with. So anything to do with your study or anything that's affecting your study, we can provide support for you. So I noticed that you've got there uh, online. Uh, is it 100% online or do you need to come into campus? What's what's What do you do there? It's not 100% online, but uh, we have a lot of um, a lot of our classes are in the evenings, okay. 5.30 to 8.30, and those are online. So they're on Teams, Microsoft Teams, so you don't need to come into the campus. It's quite useful, especially if you are working full-time, you can effectively just pop down to the campus uh, if needed to, or, or just, it's a lot easier, I would think. Yeah, uh, online suits a lot of people because you've got, may have children, um, as you say, work commitments, etc. Um, we don't recommend that you try and join while you're working. That's not a good idea. Right. But um, but definitely, you know, um, people who've got kids, things to do, maybe you don't like traveling at night um, and travel. Let's face it, Auckland's difficult to travel with, you know, um, in the in the afternoon rush hours. So we put those evening sessions online. Um, and if you've got any technical issues joining, We've also got good support for that. And the lecturers are also able to support you there as well. And uh, what sort of pathway do you have? Um, you've got your level four program. If I completed this program, what what could I go into next? So we do have some of our graduates doing a level six diploma. Uh, you can also go into a bachelor of social work. Um, so there are a number of pathways uh, that you can go into for further education, uh, but generally people are going into the workplace, you know, uh, as a support peer support worker, and then um, our students tend to progress quite quickly through to more senior roles within that because of their knowledge and skills from the program. Perfect. So I will stop sharing. So, yeah. Well, if you've got any questions uh, for Marie, feel free to just type them in in the chat window. Um, but if you don't have any now, but may have something later, we will send out an email to everyone who's registered online. So watch out for those um, uh, for that email itself, and then we can you can reply back to that, and we can put you through to the right department. So. Um, Marie, hey, thanks a lot for your uh, presentation, um, especially around anxiety. You know, I, I know I, I've had it before, and I know many people have, and um, trying to figure out what it was initially was uh, quite terrifying. I didn't know what was going on, um, but I, I recognised what it was uh, at an early stage, and and I know when it's coming on, so I do I do have ways to combat it, and, uh, and the way I do that is by um, going to the gym or going for a walk or eating well and just just being aware of my surroundings and knowing my stress levels so I do find that um you know what you, what you brought up is quite useful so I'm hoping who have watched this have had um have learned a bit there so thank you Marie and uh we will hopefully catch up soon um I know we've got another webinar planned with some of those providers that uh you do place them into so if you are keen on doing this program and I want to know where you'll be placed uh stay tuned for our next webinar which we'll be talking about very very soon so once again, thanks everyone. Thanks, Marie, and we'll see you in the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Cheers. everyone. Bye. Cheers.